Hey, yo, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Rena L. General. It was truly long way. Yo, yeah, this is Black Jet Evil Timothy. Farmer Michael. What it do, what it does. What, what up, up what up, people? This was good. Are you listening to or tuned into the Five, Five Rounds podcast? Five Rounds. Five Rounds. Five Rounds. Make sure you stick it right here because it's lit. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Welcome to Five Rounds. Um, you've got myself, Juan Tali. You've got uh, Ovi, too nice, and you've what got do what it does. Yeah, man. <laughs> so today, today we've got a very special guest, Big Big Fish, as they call him. You know what I mean? Um, one of the top dogs of the rap game. So this guy's a rapper, songwriter. He was voted um, Malawi's best rapper on Joy FM twice. Um, he's got hip hop honors in 2011. Performed at Big Brother in 2010. Oh my goodness, you, you must already know who this guy is. Shall I go on? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I mean, this man has worked with Lucius Banda, San B, Barry One, Taps Bandao, and most of uh, the industry, pretty much, most of the household names. Um, I think, well, this guy goes by so many names. It depends on who you know him as, but we know him as Hyphen. Hyphen, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? What's going on? All right, so Obi, take mm. it away, man. How's yeah, it going? Um, how we're good. How how are you keeping yourself, uh, hyphen? How's how's everything? I'm surviving. 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 One day at a time. <laughs> well, one, yeah, well, one step at a time until we get there. Um, yeah. Before before we go straight into the questions, anyway, we just want to make uh, you know all our fans to know. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we having a chat with you from? Where are you uh, in Malawi? In Blanta, Lilongwe? Where are you talking to us from? I'm in Blanta, Unitary, at home right now. All right. All right. Yeah, cool, All cool. Right. yeah that's, that's that's cool. That's fantastic. The, the the old capital city anyway by now. So everybody from Lilongwe will be going like all hyped anyway. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> Controversial. I know. Look. <laughs> We, we, without without further ado, we're gonna go into the first thing that we really we, we're all we're all puzzled even when we when we introduced you, right? Um, what we want to know, what the fans want to know is officially what is your name? Is it Young K hyphen Fumu hyphen or Broken Knowledge? <laughs> no, uh, as of right now, as of right now, the name is hyphen. Um, then Fumo comes in with uh, the social media, you know, the name hyphens. Obviously, there's a whole lot of a whole lot of hyphens there. So then Fumo was to kind of uh, demarcate myself from all that. So yeah, man, it kind of just fits. Also, I feel like so, yeah, man. The, but it's just hype. Yeah. Hyphen, hyphen. So it says have hyphen. And what yeah. what about broken broken knowledge? Where where did that one come from? Because I also know broken knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But. That's that's from a very long time ago, probably like two thousand and two, two thousand and three. Mm. Uh, when I was when I was emulating my friends who were rapping at the time uh, in high school and whatnot, so mm. it was kind of cool to have these names that are scientific and what what all this uh, how yeah. rap was that in the days. <laughs> so brass, was, uh, brass knuckles. The broken language. <laughs> The young K kind of took over, and that I run with that for a while, and then mm. yeah, hyphen now. That now it's hyphen. So 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 that's that's it, guys. So, so everybody will be watching this next time you listen to travel. Next time you're listening to Zukun Bega Bua, that's that's the new release that we recently heard. Um, it's yes, it's, yeah. it's it's hyphen. It's hyphen. Broken yeah. knowledge is gone and all that. No, that's, that's wait, 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 Ovida, Ovida, yeah? Ovida, before yeah. you say anything, you, 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 you know why, uh, hyphen. For me, believe it or not, uh, when I left Malawi, that means I left the time when you were young K. So, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like uh, this, this is amazing. You know? I'm amazed. You see how we're all connected now, so you you haven't missed a step. It's hyphen. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> that's, that's well, there's, there's hyphens everywhere. So I, I guess. I guess. So I wanted to find out why you called yourself hyphen. Do you know what I mean? Is it because yeah. of the the connections or how you connect people? Or, you know. That was that was basically it. I kind of just said it in a rhyme like a long time ago. Just hyphen the word connected, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuck. I'm like, oh, that's dope. 
All right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Get a, turn it to hyper, okay. <laughs> the, the shoe fits, huh? The shoe yeah, the shoe fits. Because me, me, me personally, what I thought was kind of think of because of the actual hyphen symbol, I was like, oh, maybe because <laughs> I, young K, I've got it, you know? <laughs> No, 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 my, my young K never had a hyphen in it, uh, no? so yeah, you know, but, but the name hyphen has been this, uh, like ever since people knew me in Malawi as, as young K, mm. the, the name was yeah. in the songs and whatnot, so it wasn't really like a new thing, mm. uh, a lot of people are, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, when I was in conversation with Ovi last night, and he was he was asking me, "What what is hyphen? What is it?" I said, "Go and Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Go and Google it, bro." <laughs> it was such a funny conversation. Um, listen, uh, Young K, can you describe how you became one of Malawi's prominent hip hop artists? How you went from being broken knowledge to hyphen? How did that? You know, what was the journey basically? When were the key points? Uh, like I said earlier, uh, the, the rapping started with uh, checking out my friends in high school. They were doing it, and you know it was kind of cool. I wasn't doing it then. I would, I would go at home. And I used to write a lot, not necessarily music. I would just write. Mm. I'm not a confrontational person, so whenever I have issues, I write them down. Mm. So that's how it all started, and uh, slowly turned into rhymes. And uh, a friend of mine checked out my, my little rhyme book. And I was like, oh, this, this is something. And uh, they called me out of the studio. I think my first recording was in 2005. Jeez. Uh, some, some song that when I find everywhere, I delete. Ah. <laughs> uh, what song is this, man? <laughs> 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 do you listen to the song and you're like, nah, what was I doing? What was I doing? <laughs> but I, I still think, like, for my first ever recording, it wasn't so bad. But mm. just seeing at this, this point that I'm at right now, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's, no, that's 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 another thing that I'll be thinking because if you're saying that, you look at that song, you never did you ever think you'd reach to this point, like. This is a point where you you're one of the best lyricists, you're one of the best artists in the whole country of Malawi. Did you ever imagine that you're gonna be in this bracket at all, or were you just like, I'm just gonna do this for fun? Not if it was, it was for fun. Um, uh, like most of the times when I'm when I'm bored, like I'm saying, I used to write a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. So. My free time was spend time at the studio with the homies, and so we, we it took a lot of a lot of writing, a lot of practice. Um, yeah, yeah, man. I I, I think that just the uh, the passion for it is what's got me to this point. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is that people fell in love with, people gravitate towards. I don't know. It's just me doing me. So I'm lucky I got it. <laughs> yeah, no friend. Very talented. Yeah, yeah. From no. from the from the outside looking in, I think it was the wordplay. You know, I think you were yeah. one of the first few artists that knew how to mix the Chichewa with the English and keep it and still keep it trendy. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so it yeah. was it was people resonated to that because I think at the time that you were coming out, Desert Eagle was out. You know, obviously Kelly Clips was out. Yeah. There were a lot of uh, Tay Green was out at the time, and there were a lot of artists doing a lot of English-based songs. There were not many people that were doing were mixing the Chichewa side. So once you came in, everyone's like, "Whoa, who's this guy?" Yeah, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know. And you forget one thing, one party. Uh, it's not even the fact that he was doing the way he was doing, but the way he did it. It was like I remember when I first heard him. It was it was amazing. You did it in the right way, uh, sort of a good balance. Because some people do it and it wasn't well balanced. And you'd be like, you know what? I <laughs> just stick to one side. I don't think that's where I come from. Like a listener, when I was listening, some people used to do that at a point in time. Is you used to just say, you know what? It should have just stuck to English. No, it should have just stuck to Chicho. But the way you did it, people were like, you know what? This guy, he's doing it the right way, and I can understand both sides. You know, my my, my thing was to try as much as I can. To emulate the conversations that we have. If we don't, we are with the guys. It's never strictly yeah. English. It's never strictly mm. yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Blends. I try. I try to do that with the music as well. Just get it flow naturally. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's, that's clever. That is good. Um, 
Well, next question then. Okay, so <laughs> you you were once under the leadership of uh, Pempo Gafotega, the head of Rush Records. How would you describe yes, your your relationship with him and your time at the label? Yeah, man, uh, he's actually the one that got me into rap. Uh, okay, uh, the first song that I ever recorded. Um, yeah, man, he's the. Uh, he was the, the one that pushed me a lot. Was, um, I, I tend to get lazy sometimes. When I feel like this music is not really doing much for me, I'm like, ah, there you go. He's the one that kept pushing me to do it. And, uh, you know, uh, pretty much owe a lot to him. So the, the right. industry owes The industry a lot owes a lot to Mr. Mpoka Fodeka. Yeah. 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 You know? Rush Records. Rush Records, man. I mean, yeah. for that people... Was, that, was, that was a big force back then. Oh, yeah, very, yeah, it was. Yeah, very, very big. Yeah, very big that. force. Every song from Rush Records was going on Joy FM. You know what I mean? Yeah, you knew that it's going to be there. <laughs> We had Kenny Cliffs there. We, it was it was a big it was a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, nah, he, he nah. handled he handled the business well. He did he did everything right. Um, before before I actually before I actually uh, ask you the next question, I just want to say to the people watching the show, um, please remember to subscribe, share, and like at Five Rounds, and most of all as well at Hyphen on Twitter. Um, we have our special guest episode. Um, Hyphen is one of the biggest hip hop artists and songwriters as well in our country, in Malawi. Uh, we obviously gonna have all the links to his socials and his music down on the bio, as you can see, for you to give it a listen. It's type of music that everybody can listen, either you're know, sad, happy, or in a party mood. It's all your albums can cover all that. Before I go, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna ask you this. In, in 2000 and, 2007, your first album drops pretty much. That's the first album that we seen, right? And it was called XL, yeah. right? Um, yeah. There's a song that is called Untold Story, yeah? yeah. When I listened to Untold Story, it, 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 it caught my ears, especially when you referred to slavery, yeah? Am I right? Because that's what I could hear. You referred most of your points towards like slavery kind of kind of way in your in your rap, in your in your lyrics. I want to understand uh, the song. If you could expand expand on that, what what was the whole message across on that song? And told story in Excel. Now here's the thing that messes me up. A lot of my music I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say this guy has so much music. You like you you go. Yo, I, 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 really, I really don't. I really don't remember what was going on. Um, <laughs> I just know. I just know. I got a beat from Desert Eagle, and we went yeah. to the studio. <laughs> and you're like, that yeah, this gonna be a told story. That was, that was it. Did he? Did, did did Desert Eagle produce the whole album? I think it was. Right? Not, not not the whole album, but a lot of it. A lot of mm. it, yeah. I mean, he was the force back then. I mean, big up Desert Eagle or Desert Eagle now, isn't he? He was, he was the force behind uh, Rush Records at the time. You know, every hit that you guys had, he produced it. You know, so yeah. it's best to say that without Desert Eagle and Pempo, there's no, there's no, there's no hyphen or Young K. You know, <laughs> yeah, there was, there, was, there was quite a few people. There was Pempo. There was a uh, guy called uh, Muna, uh, Baby Jenks. Mm. Uh, obviously, there's an ego, it's the Kenny Clips as well. There was quite Western a few people, that yeah, yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, um, next question so, growing up, a you know, growing up a fan of music, yeah, and an as and an aspiring artist, uh, which Malayan artist stood out to you the most and why? Mm, I there wasn't really, it was basically, I, I never. Really used to listen to music a lot. Wow. Uh, I, I listened to a lot of music in the house because of my sister and my cousins. But as far as myself, uh, and I know a lot of people, I'm a gambler, so yeah, if, 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 if it wasn't for this person, right? And what, what, what? For yeah. me, uh, I just stay away from the whole conversation just so I don't look like some guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ungrateful to the people that came before me? But uh, 
Yeah, yeah I, it, it was never really anything like that. Like looking at somebody and saying, "I'm aspiring to be something like that." Nah, it was never anything. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, no, oh, it's, that's that's very strange. It's it's, for, it's, for a person that is that that big in music and that good in music, and you're the person who wants to really into listen to this one, listen to this one. You just did your thing. <laughs> you know, it was, it was and, and and the thing is, even with talking about favorite artists or favorite whatever, I don't have any of it. Yeah, like wow. I, I, I pick from so many people to create this thing that I have. So I. I have moments that are dope for people, but you say, well, this is my favorite thing, like favorite, favorite. Mm. Uh, no, <laughs> that's very weird. Interesting, eh? I'm a pure, I'm a pure, I'm a pure Malawian. Like, come on, these people that are social <laughs> media that, that like you today, and tomorrow they're like, eh. Hey. <laughs> <Nah, I'm tired. laughs> okay. <No. laughs> so you were like, you were like, ah, oh, man, I'm feeling this record today. Next day, nah, man. No, no, no. I don't nah, know that, I was that, listening. That, so, yeah, how, how I wake up? I wake up tomorrow, so it's just different emotions all the time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You know what? For me, for me, look, uh, I wanted to ask you just just for me. Um, you know, your album first impression in 20, 20, 2009, uh, it was Malawi's, uh, I think Malawi's highest selling uh, hip hop album at the time. Uh, did you foresee that? Uh, did you foresee the, the success of that album when you first finished recording it? Nah, nah, but even even when we say that, like, I don't think it was was something that was that significant. <laughs> there weren't many things being sold. As far as music, it wasn't being sold like that. As far as hip-hop, because other, yeah. other genres were selling through OG Issa and them, and that was yeah. different back. Yeah, but as far as hip-hop, just I think that was just like bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to be humble, man? Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's very dumb play. We, yeah, we were all in Malawi at that time. Because I, and I remember anywhere, like, if, if you're in Blanta, and I remember those time in Blanta, and they're like, oh, young K is going to perform in, 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 in Blanta at Blue Elephant or something. Everybody was yeah. going there. Because everybody was like, oh, I, I have to go. The shows are different from the album sales. The, album, the show is not yeah. the shows I had. But the, the, as far as the selling of the album, eh. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that was bragging like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's good you cleared that up, man. Because that's yeah. all over, that's all over the internet. They're like, yeah, yeah. Man, song sold. Wow. I mean, yeah, you know. I mean, you. Being I mean, a... it, it, it could have. It could have. And uh, also another thing was like, what other album was there to be compared to? So true. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever number that we're looking at it might not be so significant, but because yeah. that was the only. Thing. Well, while well, we're still on that album, yeah, I want to ask you now. That was your second album. Why? Why yeah. did you have to? Why did you have to call it first impression? Because I think your first impression should have been Excel. You know what I mean? <laughs> why it was was that the first impression? Because I think when I when you hear if I when I heard Excel, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. This, this is the new stuff. This is new type of rap. And then you drop a second album like first impression, like oh like. I think that one was the first impression because we know you now. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, for the for the reason why a lot of people still think Ananka Bango was my first ever song. So uh, oh, we, okay. let, we let them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, some people. Yeah, of course, yes. I think some people weren't really listen to. Even um, would think that was your, your first song. Came out, just a few people, mostly those that really love hip hop, knew yes. about it. Yeah, about it. Yeah. As far as as far as reaching the masses, we tried. We, we, break that with first impression and it, it worked mm. okay i mean it, it be, this being your breakthrough album right what was the um so what was the idea i know this one was probably the first one you actually organized properly i guess well you yeah. would have to confirm that what would be the um, what was the idea behind the album what was the concept of the album i know he's asked you about the first impression but what was the concept we actually made the album because we were angry uh I don't remember which producer this was uh, that was telling us that we we are terrible. We were <laughs> we are bad, you know. So it was uh, it was myself, Pimpo, and uh, Sonia Zo. Yeah. Oh, so Sonia. just sat in the car while it was raining, like yo, man, let's just do it. Show these mm. people that we're not playing as well. So yeah, man, that's how the whole of it started. Pick up Sonia. Pick up Sonia. Pick up Sonia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh wow! Wow. 
Um, so the well, next question, I guess. So Anankabango, you know, for people that don't know Anankabango, this was a smash hit that um was highly fused with the Malayan and urban style. It had a very um say they say local style and also a little bit of that rap culture in it you know um it was one of the first one of i guess one of the first catchy songs in that in that right you know um mm -hmm. it had a catchy hook from tigris of course and some smooth verses from mr mr young k then now yeah. um, yes <laughs> what was the story behind that song I think? uh <laughs> I don't remember why I started writing. I remember uh, I used to work in some some building in, right in the middle of town, mm. and uh, if I looked out the window, there was some chick that used to pass by all the time. <laughs> mm. that was the inspiration for that song. That's how it started, and uh, just to play around with the whole Anankabango. I actually went around just to find out what the story was with uh, the Anankabango folklore folktale. I mm. still never really got it. I, I never really. Got it. So this was like my version of it. Uh, I, I don't remember what the actual one talks about. Yeah. out a lot, this thing. Right? Yeah. I mean, you, you started to sound like you made this song high, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, uh, just to give you a little bit of a reminder, your first line in that song, I'm gonna say it in detail, then I said, Look, now nobody would be going to jump this one if they go a man. You know what I mean? So, this guy was like, Look, I am tired of this seasonal love, you know, this on and off stuff. I want the prominent thing. I'm looking yeah. for a prominent girl, you know. So, then obviously, when he finishes his verse, Tigris kicks in with Anna Kapal, you know, as if to say, Look, I'm here, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. here. You know, you should. Just yeah. that, that I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 like at the front, the good thing, you know, the, 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 the absolute amazing thing about that song, the, the chorus itself was so catchy. I yeah. think, if I'm right, when your kids you used to sing that song at night on the dark, and then Gabango, the exact, uh, the exact folk tale, folk tale that, that went with that song, and I still mm. don't, I don't know what it, what it was about. <laughs> because all I remember, I remember when you're young, you go, let's say you go to see your granny, and then all the kids will be together, and you make a circle, and you'll be singing the same songs like that, you know, like you're trying, you're trying, someone's trying to find a boyfriend, or, I mean, a girlfriend or something. And then come on, go, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. What kind of malaria was this? Because it didn't happen in my part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which part you're in. No, but like, like if you go to the village, your grannies and all that, you, I remember I remember songs like that. You, you know, you in the dark in the night, in the moon, and you'll be singing songs, you'll be a circle, people will be dancing around, you'll be singing local songs like that. And that's that's where I, I remember all that kind of verse. There was, there's, a whole, there's a whole bunch of songs like that, which we get to miss out because we really don't remember. We, it was never really yeah. passed down to the rest of us so we, mm. we we're missing out because mm. if, if that what did to the the song Anankabango imagine if we had a whole bunch of those that we would have yeah that's yeah that's totally true totally true you know <laughs> uh, another an another one in the same album though before we can go on another one that one is the, the Wait, personal one listen we're gonna ask a lot of a lot of questions well a few questions from about this album because obviously it's, it was one of your biggest yeah. albums so yeah um another one for me Photo book. I know now you say most of the songs when you write, you don't really, you're like, you're like oh, I, I, I can't remember that one. Do you remember photo book? This is my photo book, my pictures, of my brothers and my sister. All of the memories that I own now, the people that pass on that I own now. This is my photo book. Photo book is an amazing song. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I had... I had called Sonia to make that beat for me. Mm -hmm. And I, as far as the lyrics, I'm not sure how, man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote the whole song, including the chorus. But yeah. I couldn't sing it, so I do it. Uh, I don't remember what. Ah, I'm annoyed. <laughs> 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 and see, 
Listen, see, the funny thing is that, and then it's an amazing song. And then if you have to put it there and say, all right, you remember, you'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, if, if today, if like recently, like, have uh, a lot of songs, let's say, for example, some songs in the, the Excel project. There was a song, mm. uh, let the, I remember I wrote that like at, at 2 a.m. I woke up just and wrote that at 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. a lot of songs I, I wrote like around that time of, of night. Yeah, just I like that. Wake up idea and go mm. <laughs> uh. fair enough man um <laughs> so another question i don't know if Pat would okay so i'll ask you this question right this song you should remember it because this one you know it was yeah it was deep so basically mm. off the same album right um yeah. This album also featured a song titled Amazing Grace, right? Um, the organ dominated song produced by Des Ego, or Des Igwe, sorry, yeah. uh, with a brilliant hook by Tigris. In this melodic song, you pay homage to your mother, to your late mother, in the form of a letter, right? Can you describe the emotions that you went through making this song? Uh, okay, let me just say that it wasn't, it wasn't Tigris on that first, that was uh, Eleanor. Was that okay. a, my bad? Eleanor, Eleanor. Damn. <laughs> same girl that's on a track number two, Mercy, on that album. Mercy, yes, cool. Yeah. Uh, again, man, uh, this is it's one of those songs again. I don't remember writing it, it's just something that I it pulled out originally. Yeah. Like this. It's not something like I, I can say I sat down and thought and thought. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Hard to sit down and think of. That just kind of came out. Mm. So, mm. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. for, for anyone who's lost uh, a parent or anyone, a loved one, I recommend you listen to this song because it's not just a letter to his mother. It's, it's like he's rallying everyone who's got pain, who's ever felt that pain and said, look, this is how you should speak about that person that has left you, you know what I mean? Mm. And he, yeah. you know, he sort of mentions things like things that you might take for granted. He mentions things like, you know, uh, you know, I don't want people looking at me with pity. It, 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 it angers me. He didn't say it that way, but he said, I don't want people looking at me like I need them, you know, or I'm just telling you because I feel this pain, but I'm not looking for your pity. Do you know what I mean? Mm. In that song, he's yeah, looking, looking at you like an orphan, and that's how it's done. Exactly. Mm. exactly. Mm. Exactly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, and I can level with you on that one. When I heard that song, if I was going to do a song, I was like, I can't do anything better than this. You know what I mean? Because that mm. was, that was strange. It's a tough line, though, tough line. Yeah, uh -huh. man, honestly, man, it's a very, very good song. Uh, I, was just, I, was just, I was just putting everything in about that song. I've already put it on my playlist this side. Just uh, just yeah. <laughs> you play it after. Yeah, you play it. Okay, so... Uh, at the at the height of your career, man, you performed the uh, Usumana. Uh, Usumana. Usumana. <laughs> Usumana. <laughs> I am like Usumana. Usumana uh, at uh, the BBA uh, show. Uh, that's Big Brother. Yeah. Um, I I this was being across the continent and uh, watched by millions. How did you feel at that moment yourself? It was dope, man. Uh... I was young then. I think I was like 23, 24. Uh, but it was an exciting thing. Uh, that was my first time outside the country doing music. Mm. Just mm. That, was, that was like a big deal. Like, even though I'm sure the, the, the parents were proud. <laughs> the whole country yeah, was proud. I don't know, the whole country. I think the whole yeah. country, I still, I still remember, I still remember, I remember watching Big Brother and you pulled up singing that song and I can tell you what you're, you're putting on a brown jumper. <laughs> I remember, I still the, remember that. The favorite, the favorite jersey. Yes, <laughs> a brown one. I still remember that watching that because the whole world was proud of like Young K is performing. I think, I think if everybody had their television at home on that night, they were watching Big Brother Africa. Yeah. Period. <laughs> so I was saying, like, I, I seen that, and I'm 100% sure, man, on that night, uh, the whole of Malawi, if they had a television, they were watching Big Brother Africa because everybody heard Young K is going to perform, and everyone wanted to see ah, Young K on television. And, yeah. that, and at that time, you rarely see things like that. Like, like, I don't think, like, of course, I know now Big Brother Africa is gone, yeah? 
Uh, but I don't see, I don't, I, 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 who else performed here? Apart, it was you from Malawi. Uh, Tay Green. Tay has performed there as well. Yeah. Theo, Theo Thompson did it. Oh, uh, Theo Masco. Masco. I, I Masco, yeah. So. Wait, Lomi did perform? Lomi no, performed so, there. Lomi performed. Was, was but, no, he, he was, performed. He came back. He came back the next year and performed. <laughs> yes. Did you yeah. for a performance? Yeah, he yeah. came back for a performance with uh, Zeus. With Zeus. Oh, oh yeah, double wowza. Double wowza. Oh, I remember that because he said it when we were interviewing him as well. <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, he, he, he was like, yeah, man, we came back. Um, no, absolutely. This is now. It was a, to be honest, that moment was a proud moment for Africans, for Malawians as well, because um, when you went there, you represented a lot of people. Because Malawians are known as very humble people, very quiet, very you know. Chilled. So for somebody like you to go there, it's like ah, if he can go there, I can go there too. You know what I mean? I'm gonna get behind this guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. made, it, made it look possible, you know. So mm. nah, nah, yeah. it was uh, nah, it was very, very good, man. Very, very good. So yeah. uh, next question, man. You've been working on a lot of projects uh, lately. Should we expect a hyphen album coming soon? Can you spill that some news? That is a plan. Uh, okay. As far as the time. I would, I would lie to say when yeah. exactly it's coming out. Um, mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been promising people an album for a while. So I, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. want to mention it. I, to be but honest yeah, man, with you. I, I have been working on some things. Uh, the, the Zimbabwe track that just came out is part of the whole project. I, yeah. I was kind of forced to give something to the people because they kept saying, well, you're too quiet. Give us some." I was holding yeah. it. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, well, I continue working on it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, in fact, I, that's why, that's the reason behind that song, man. <laughs> because cause, cause recently, all you've seen is, we've seen is you featuring in other people's songs. I, I remember I heard another one, uh, recent, recent, no, no, that was last year. I heard one you yeah. featured in. And when the, the person said to the song, he said, oh, it's hyphen. I was like, oh, really? He said, he said, he said, and he sent me uh, yeah. God with episodes. Oh, yeah, God, uh, yeah. God's. I mean, I listened to it. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, he's back. He's back. So, you know, the, uh, the excitement started going on. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think some of the drop, you know what I mean? But now to hear yeah. from you that, yeah, we should be expecting. So, yeah, our fingers will be twirling our fingers like that. Yeah, when is that? When is that? You know, because I'm sure, like, as you're saying, I'm definitely People. working on something and I want it to be something that I'm really proud of. So that's why I'm taking quite my time with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's, that's cool. You know, uh, for me, for me, I, uh, every time I'm speaking to uh, rappers or musicians, especially musicians like yourself, who I see highly, especially in Malawi, or throughout going, like somebody who we used to be impressed with, and say, oh, look, wow, look at that guy, man. That guy is definitely in my top five, you know. Uh, what about this stuff? I want to know, what is your top five rappers of all time yourself? Of all time? Uh, what, in, in this country or? No, worldwide? everywhere. I want you to just everywhere, man. Uh, <laughs> see, again, this, yeah? this, was, this, was, this, would imply, this would imply these are my favorite artists, and I don't have any favorites. <laughs> okay, no, okay. <laughs> Today, because you said you like an artist today, eh? today. <laughs> yeah, right you know, now, today. You know that that fifty cent is the greatest of all time. Tomorrow, no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, it's usually the same names that are usually in people's talk. The whole Jay Z's mm. and the Nas's and the J Cole's. I'm a big mm. Jada Kiss fan, a fabulous fan. Mm. Mm. Uh, I listen to a lot of music that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily think I listen to. Uh, right. A lot of gospel. A lot of, mm. just, just think. Oh, I, thought yeah. maybe, I thought maybe you're going to say something again. I don't know where you get inspiration from. So. Yeah, mm. man. Nah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, you know that that uh, you know the one you mentioned there, fabulous, underrated artist, man. A lot of people always sleep on him. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a fan. Yeah. 
one of the most underrated. underrated. What, what does it mean to say he's underrated? Like we know him, a lot of people know him, and they know he's dope. So let's not say he's underrated. He's, <laughs> he's yeah, I, I, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say is like every time, like for me when I'm listening to him and the respect I give him, I find when I'm in a group, right? People are surprised. Yeah. Like, see, see, yeah, 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 you're feeling the fabulous that way. Like I put him over yeah. and say, you know what, fabulous. I put him in this group. You find people will be like, yeah. fabulous. Because you know what? Because he was doing those other things. When, you know? when they play the music, they understand all that. When they play the music, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah we get what you mean. Yeah. You, got, yeah. you, got, you, you got to understand. I think hip hop historically is a muscular dominated sort of theme. You know, it started with yeah. this is what's going on in the street. People are dying and whatnot. So, yeah, Fabulous, them, yeah. and, Fabulous and Lilla Cool J were coming out with songs like I Wanna Butter Your Feet, or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? And the guys <laughs> are there. You know, think about these New York gangsters saying, I ain't rapping to that. What are you talking See, that's, about? Yeah, that's how they judge him. You know? That's all they judge him on. Exactly. But Fabulous had some hits, man. It's just that his yeah. main songs yeah. were the ladies' songs. He knew where to sell and his rap. He's still going strong. He's still going strong. Exactly. Exactly. So now nah, he is one. He's one of one of the greatest, I think, Fabulous. Wordplay? Wordplay? There's not many. There's not many. We could say that Fabulous is the young K of America. <laughs> or the hyphen of America. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so next question. Um, so we've heard a lot about hyphen the rapper, right? But, you know, how yeah. would you, dis how would you um, describe yourself, the rapper, compared to Francis the family man? Do you know what I mean? So how do you separate the two? You know, or is it just one person? I just deal with life the way it is. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much that type of person. I, I deal with life the way it, it's it rolls. Um, but I try I try my best. I'm not the rapper that's out there telling people I'm the rapper. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm Francis. When I step out the house, I'm still Francis. I'm hyping when I'm in the studio. I'm hyping when I'm on stage. But that's yeah. about it. Otherwise, we all regular people. It's just if I'm in a space, I don't like being in a place where a lot of attention is on me. If I'm not on stage, oh. I don't like it at all. So if I'm in a space, let's chill. Let's just be normal. Sound so. What what you said that when you are in, on stage and in the studio, you're hyphen, right? And then the rest of the time is Francis. Is there a distinguishing character characteristic between the two? You know, is it's... not really, uh, not really. Just that the other person, it's just a rap, the, the hyphen guy raps, but otherwise, it's just me, man. The, the same chilled person, <laughs> same chilled, <laughs> stable, all stable, the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you guys have any more questions before we yeah, go to I, the end? I actually do myself, just uh, just out of uh, interest. Like, it also falls to the whole family thing, because myself, I'm also, uh, I'm a father of two, and um, there's certain things I can't really do now because of being a father, things that I, I used to do before. Like, I'm just asking you as an artist, do you still do a lot of performing on stages, or that's gone down a bit now? No, 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 actually now it's, it's slightly more hectic now. Like this past weekend, I was in Mangoji on Friday, Lanta on Saturday, and Zuzu on Sunday. So that's still happening a lot. But, hey, big, uh, up the big up the wife. Big up the wife for holding you down, brother. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, man. But yeah, so during the week, this is me doing homeworks with the kids and whatnot. That's, you know, until the next weekend comes and we're back at it. That's good, man. Nah, that's good. Nah, big up still. Um, my question I wanted to ask, right? Um, I in my mind, I've got a song that I feel made hyphen, right? Or made Young K at the time. What song do you yeah. think, you know, when you did a song, you were like, ah, yes. Whether it was a feature or whatever, you see, you're like, ah, yes, I think this is it. You know, judging by how you made the song and maybe how people, you know, saw it. Which song do you feel was like, yeah, this is my coming out song. This is the song that people were like, yeah, we know who this guy is now, you know? Well, obviously, everybody was going to say Alan Kabango because that's when the world uh, kind of knew about me. Uh, as far as myself, man, like all my songs, I have to look at all my songs as that. <laughs> they, have to, they have to be all my babies, all these songs. They have to be. <laughs> I can't see that I gave one of the songs less of my attention. Therefore, 
wouldn't be as much uh, as a priority. But for my songs, I have I put in. If if I can't sell it to you, I won't give it to you. Like I I mean, if I can buy it myself, I won't try to sell it to you. So I have to give it a hundred percent all the time. So all my all my music, it's my babies. <laughs> facts, man. Facts. Um. Growing up, I'll, I'll give you my song because obviously, growing up, um, a, a hip hop fan, especially a Malayan hip hop fan, the song that I felt defined Young K, or the song that I was like, Whoa, okay, this guy is actually a lyricist, was Pompo. When you featured in Pompo, featuring uh, Biri, that song, yeah. the word play in that song, I still play that song till today. The beat, so everything's yeah. perfect, do you know what I mean? And I'm a big Barry One yeah. fan as well. So having both of you in one song and you killing Barry One, don't tell him I said that, but you killing Barry One, <laughs> jeez, <laughs> you know, jeez, nah, nah, that was, nah, that was, that was it for me, I think. Um, that's my that's my big that's my big bro, man. Very one. That's one of them that's that's, that's the been guy. killing it. The Bro, it's in strategy, isn't it? It's in strategy, yeah. you know. What a big guy, man. Big guy. Um, I think I'll ask one more question because these guys are burnt. Um, one more <laughs> question. What what was your what was your proudest moment? You know, as an artist, what was your proudest moment? What did you feel? Okay, this was a great achievement. Do you know what I mean? What was it? Um, I think the first one has to be the Big Brother moment. Mm, mm, mm. But I think some 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 months prior to that that uh, performance, I was actually in South Africa. Again. Yeah, I was actually in South Africa again, but for me and the guys, I go Lanzigambe. Theater. He mm -hmm. had done this play. He had done this play. It was sort of like a hip opera thing that we did. So mm -hmm. me and Ty mm -hmm. were right. We wrote the music, the whole the whole play, and uh, mm -hmm. so we we traveled, we traveled around Malawi performing that. Then we were in South Africa performing that. So mm -hmm. that was one of those. I bet, man. The, I bet. Like flying, flying across the country one minute. I mean, one minute you've never flown, and then you're flying, and then you're doing music while doing that. I mean, that's a that's a great yeah. thing, man. And carrying Malawi on your back as well. I bet when you came back, <laughs> everyone was just throwing themselves at you, like, "Hey, man, take me, take me, please, right now." <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's Listen. never been that for me, man. Uh, as far as I'm chilled, but I'm not really like an approachable person. Mm. Um, I hang out with the people that I hang out with, and that's it. That's... Tight circle. Yeah, man. You gotta yeah. keep it that way. You gotta keep the circle small, man. Um... Okay, so I, I have uh, one. Uh, sorry, there. I want to have uh, one more. One more thing to to ask you myself is: uh, Do you have another passion apart from music yourself? Yeah. Uh, well, anything in the creative sector, man. Uh... Like right now, I have a company called Alpha Arts, where we do graphic designing and printing and stuff like that. Plug it, man. Or anything, Plug it. anything in the creative circles, man. As long as it, it's creative, if I'm creating it, nobody can tell me that it's wrong or not. So, <laughs> so those are the things that I try to do. Man. That's good. Nah, that's good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that is that is the last question. So, as a tradition of the interview, we normally let the guest do the outro. So. If you could do the honors, you can sign up however way you want to sign up. So you can say who you are or if you've got a saying, and then that's it. That's it, man. Maybe a free start. I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, shout out to Kells for making this happen. <laughs> big, up, big up Kells. Big up Kells. Big up Kells. Shout out to Kells for making this happen too, yeah, man. I appreciate you guys for taking your time. Bro. Yeah, man. That's it. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Guys, this is uh, what you've been watching here is Hyphen's interview. This has been five rounds. Um, you know, like Ovi said, make sure you are subscribed so that we can keep bringing you good content. You know what I mean? So like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you don't miss anything. I have been one Tali's Patrick. It's Ovi too nice, but obviously, most importantly, it was Hyphen. You know what I mean? The greatest lyricist in Malawi. Guys, we'll see you later. Peace. Yeah, bye. bye.